Hey, what's going on guys? And who's ready for some tech news? So last Monday, AMD announced that they plan on dropping a new Epic CPU with the codename Vermongo. It is supposed to have a whole whopping 128 cores. These chips are meant for data center cloud computing with special power efficiency and scaling features. I mean, why would you need all these cores in your gaming rig? Of course, these are gonna be meant for servers. They also plan on releasing a Genoa with 96 cores, which is nothing to be too impressed about. These CPUs are supposed to be dropping around late next year or early 2023. So if you're building an Epic server, you still got some time. And yes, that pun was intended. Also, a report from 9to5Mac claims that Apple will be releasing its own 3 nanometer chip in sometime 2023. This is a big deal considering the current leading Apple chips have a 5 nanometer chip, which have showed some super impressive performance. Using a smaller process means that they could potentially pack as many as 4 dies and 40 cores just on a single chip. The iPhone is expected to also move to the 3 nanometer chips as well in 2023. So Apple is making some big moves in the CPU world. Imagine if they allowed people to buy the chips itself and put in motherboards that have the right socket for that CPU. I mean, I don't ever see Apple doing that unless you have to buy Apple motherboards, Apple everything for it to work. Which I imagine they would make a lot of money off that. But it's more of getting the people to spend that money to build that machine. Which I would rather just build a Windows machine knowing how much Apple's going to charge for that. And if your Pixel 6 isn't as charging as fast as you think it should, well you're not alone. Android Authority has already tested and shown that the Pixel 6 isn't using the full potential of Google's own 30 watt charger. Which they don't even include in the box anymore and it sold separately for $25. But from topping off at 22 watts does get you to 50% in about a half hour. And after that, the power delivery drops quite a bit, which takes two hours from the phone to go from zero to 100. And Google still hasn't mentioned anything yet about this issue. So I don't even know if they're working on it or if they're just ignoring us. But anyways, if you're using Windows 7, 8, or 8.1, and you use the OneDrive cloud storage, you might want to upgrade your Windows operating system because OneDrive for these operating systems will stop syncing with the cloud in March of 2022. You'll still be able to use the web browser, but it's going to make your life 10 times harder. Trust me on this one. Then also, Apple did announce that they plan on rolling out an update that will allow third-party repair shops to be able to fix the new iPhone 13 screens without breaking Face ID. iFixit point out the only way to do this currently is to remove a tiny microcontroller off the old screen and solder on to the new screen. But the Genius Bar had a software tool that would keep Face ID working with no issues. Apple says they don't know when the update will arrive and if you don't want to wait, you can sign up for your small business for the Apple Business Essentials subscription, which will give you access to signature Apple brand IT management and off-site repairs. So in other words, just put a case on your iPhone and don't break it. Google has been warning some small businesses about a potential legislation that could hurt them. Business owners have gotten emails from Google warning them about the dangers of the ending of the Platform Monopolies Act. A proposed bill that would ban Google and other platforms from favoring their own services. This change could make your business harder to find you, costing you your time and money, according to Google. Big tech companies are under more of a threat proposed regulation than ever. Hopefully Google is able to appeal this bill. I mean, it would help out so much people if they're able to appeal this bill. Then also YouTube is going to make a change that would remove the public dislikes, so that way you couldn't see them. YouTube says their research showed that this measure reduces the likelihood 
users will target a video's dislike to drive down the discount. YouTube creators will still be able to see the dislike counts in the YouTube studio. My opinion on this as a tech enthusiast, I don't really like this idea because trying to find a review on a certain product, I might look at the dislikes compared to other videos because not every video goes in depth into review as others. So if I'm trying to find a more in depth review, I might look for the video that has the least amount of dislikes. Then Microsoft also announced the new Surface SE, which is specifically designed for schools and students whose only entities actually allowed to buy one. It will start at only $250 with some decent I.O. This Surface laptop will be running Windows 11 SE, which is optimized for a low-end hardware. Easy to set up and manage, it also will have Microsoft Store disabled. And it also limits Windows snapping to only two apps at once. So if you plan on using more than two apps at once, you might as well just opt for a regular Windows 11 machine. In 2001, Microsoft was found guilty for artificially boosting Internet Explorer using its monopoly power, but now they are doing it with Microsoft Edge. The latest version of Windows 11 breaks the functionality with a widely used tool named Edge Deflector used to ease Microsoft's annoying practice of making every built-in Windows feature open in Edge, even if you have a different default browser. Developer Robert Mail has created a new tool called MS Edge Redirect, which works around Microsoft's workaround that broke the first workaround. Yeah. I guess they're really forcing us to use Edge. Oh my. Microsoft, we just want to use Chrome or Firefox. Come on. Anyways, guys, that's it for this tech news video. I really hope you guys like this video. Comment down below on any ideas for videos you guys like to see, or even just some things you think I should work on personally with creating better content for you guys. I'm open to constructive criticism. I think it's really helpful and definitely underestimated. Anyways guys, if you liked this video, give it a huge thumbs up, get subscribed down below, also turn on that bell notification icon so you can see the next tech news upload, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.